Thank you, Teresa. First, let me say thank you to all of you for, for uh, coming today. And I want to set the stage just a little bit for some of the research uh, initiatives that we are doing here at the University of Oklahoma and Harold Ham Diabetes Center, particularly in partnership with several of our Native American tribes. And today, in particular, we will highlight one of our projects with the Choctaw Nation. Um, I came to Oklahoma in 1999, particularly because of a new epidemic that was occurring throughout the United States, but in particular uh, related to the obesity epidemic. Uh, with children getting obese at a younger and younger and younger age, beginning in the 1990s, and only in the 1990s, we began to see type 2 diabetes, the adult form of diabetes, reaching all the way down into the pediatric age group. I came to Oklahoma largely because this particular obesity epidemic and the diabetes, type 2 diabetes uh, epidemic that followed the obesity epidemic was occurring most notably in Native American youth. Beginning in 2000, the Choctaw Nation and the University of Oklahoma Children's Diabetes Program started an initiative whereby we would partner both in clinical care and also in research to try to do something to fight diabetes, especially as it was occurring at younger and younger ages in Native American youth. Since that time, we have, we have partnered in a number of research projects, um, one of which perhaps the most uh, well-recognized one, the Today Project, has been going on for now over 10 years, supported by the NIH. Uh, to try to determine the best ways to treat type 2 diabetes when it occurs in a young person. A number of years ago, Chief Pyle, however, came to me and he said, this is great, I'm glad we're helping to figure out how to treat type 2 diabetes as it occurs in young people, but why can't we get at the root cause? Let's focus more on prevention. Isn't the way to treat type 2 diabetes in young people, isn't the best way by attacking it before it occurs, by preventing it altogether. In the last several years, we have begun to partner with Dr. Neil Henderson at the College of Public Health here on this OU campus, OU Health Science Center campus, uh, through his Native American Prevention Center to develop prevention programs that would actually do something to try to prevent diabetes in young people, especially Native young people. We're going to tell you today about the MOVE program, the MOVE project that was developed exactly for that reason, to try to address obesity before it developed into diabetes in young Native American youth. So I welcome you today for this, uh, for this briefing. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Kevin Short, who will tell you specifically about the MOVE study. Dr. Short? Okay. Uh, well, thank you for joining us today. My name is Kevin Short. I am an uh, associate professor in pediatrics. My background is in exercise physiology, so I have a real interest in getting people physically active. The reason that we think that our study is important is because Lots of large studies in adults have clearly shown that being physically active, leading a physically active lifestyle is one of the best ways to uh, prevent the onset of many diseases, including diabetes. Unfortunately, we have a large number of children, particularly here in Oklahoma, that don't lead a physically active lifestyle. So we tried to come up with some ways that we could encourage people to develop a physically active lifestyle, develop that exercise habit. The program that we have is to incentivize using financial incentives. Basically the carrot we're dangling in front of uh, these kids is to provide them some a financial reward, some money for exercising. It seems a little strange, but we need to uh, come up with an effective strategy to get them going, get them started, and then hopefully once they become comfortable with being physically active, that habit will carry on. The target group of people that we're enrolling in our study are uh, teenagers, uh, 11 to 17 years old. 
And these are kids that are not out for sports. They're not physically active more than an hour a week. They already have a high risk for diabetes because they have family members with diabetes, and they're already overweight. So we're trying to target this group that needs a little extra attention. Um, and our partners in Choctaw Nation have built some really nice wellness centers, some fitness centers. Um, and when we started talking about this project, they said, you know, we've got programs for older folks, we've got programs for little kids, but we don't see many teenagers coming through our doors. So while this program isn't meant to tackle all of the, all of the issue about recruiting teenagers, we want to focus on this one segment of the population and encourage them to get in. So with the other folks that are here today, uh, they've done a great job at recruiting uh, this group of kids, encouraging them to be active, and then uh, hopefully as the project proceeds, we'll see an uptick in their exercise behavior, and if we're really lucky, if we're very successful, we'll also see some benefits in their clinical outcomes. We do fitness tests, we measure body composition, we do blood tests and so forth. And while that's not the primary outcome of the study, um, we'll be able to document if there are some beneficial changes. Ultimately, though, we know that if these kids are physically active now during their teenage years, there'll be long-term benefits beyond the time that we're doing our study. Um, we know that if they're active now, many years down the road, their level of risk for cardiovascular disease, diabetes, other disorders will be reduced. So that's our long-term goal. Um, I guess uh, now we'll turn it over to Tammy Canada, who is the Director for Preventive Health for Choctaw Nation, and she can give her perspective about this project and the others that they're working on. Good morning. Um, I'm Tammy Kennedy, and I'm the Director of Preventative Health for Choctaw Nation. I've been with Choctaw Nation for 13 years in ambulatory setting, and three years ago moved to the Diabetes Wellness Center there in Tallahanna. Um, first, I want to tell you that it's been a great honor to work with these gentlemen um, and OU. We started on this project a couple of years ago, I believe, and it's, um, I got to assist with this uh, from the ground up. And it has, I've seen since we've started the Tallahanna um, portion of this study, just to get to be able to be with the kids and the difference that it's making in their lives. I know that we, you know, we're looking at the research aspect. Is it making them healthier? Is it making their lives better? Um, we're looking at clinical numbers, but the things that I have seen on day to day as um, the kids come in to exercise and my office is directly across the hall from the Tallahanna Wellness Center, is it's making more difference in their self-esteem and holding their heads higher. And you know, the benefits in that is the things that's gonna keep the kids encouraged to keep going and you know, make them accepted at school or be able to be part of a different group. Um, there's three in particular that I visited with, I visit with on a regular basis that's in the Tallahanna group. And from the time they started this, eight weeks or 12 weeks ago, just the, the way that they see things and the way that they perceive themselves is the thing that I have seen as a huge benefit. Um, and really close with one of the participants' mothers, and she'll come by and just say thank you, you know, so much for being a part of this study and your willingness to work with OU, and um, just the, the benefits that I see in my daughter's self-esteem and where she sees life differently now, nine weeks later, and that she can. She can do things that she wants to do. Um, it's been a, a joy to work with Dr. Copeland because of his passion. Um, you know, I have kind of that same passion with our youth and our elderly. We have a job in Choctaw Nation to make people's health, lives healthier. And um, it's just been a joy to work with Dr. Copeland because I feel that same passion with him as I have to make, make, make our Native American population healthier as well as our communities. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to the lady that's actually on the ground running this program. In the beginning, she was not part of it, and we just were struggling. And I talked to Dr. Short, and I said, you know, I know a lady that 
can get this job done if we want to work with her. She's worked with some other studies that we have, and she has actually made this program what it is today. I've watched her come in at 6 o'clock, work around her schedule to make sure she can meet with the parents and the youth that are part of this study, and I'll turn it over to her and let her, um, let her discuss what she's seen. All right, well, I'm Mary Ann Tullier, and I'm a registered nurse with the Choctaw Nation. I've worked in several grants there, but this grant is really exciting because I get to work with children. I've always worked with adults, so this is really the first time I've worked with children. And the children that are coming in who are obese and not active, to see them kind of come in and just sit there and on their cell phone or uh, not looking at me, um, I feel kind of badly for them. So they get really excited about hearing how they're going to start becoming fit with the program. Um, they, ha they aren't used to getting out and playing or exercising. So uh, we start them out with the questionnaires. Uh, they, we have to do their weight, uh, their height. And then uh, when we put them on the fitness bike, a lot of them have never even ridden a bicycle before. And so it's real interesting to see, you know, them fumbling around, just, uh, you know, putting their feet on the pedals. And then they finally get confident in doing that. And after the bike test is done, they're really tired. Uh, but we, they, we tell them, you know, they can do this. And we kind of coach them and we give them compliments and get them going, keep pedaling. And, uh, our staff at the fitness center works with them when they come in after school to actually do the three-day exercises. And um, they do the treadmill, they do bicycles, they can go run outside, and uh, then they get to see a graph to see how they're doing, to see how they keep their heart rate up. And they had no idea really how to exercise and how to do that, and it's so exciting to see that. Um, some really jump in there with both feet and try all the, the equipment. Some kind of hold back a little bit, but I think I've seen a lot of encouragement from, they, they get to bring their friends in and their family members who can work out with them. And um, some of them wouldn't look me in the eye, and now they can look me in the eye if they just get more confident. And um, so it's real exciting being involved with this. It started out in Hugo and now in T Tallahanna, where we have, I don't know, about 27, 30 kids all together now. So it's, it's exciting getting to see them uh, becoming more fit. Of course, some of them are really like the money, too. <laughs> And the equipment they get to order from a Nike catalog, and, and they get some really nice stuff. So um, they get to come in and looking nice, working out. So I'm, I'm really thankful to be involved with the OU and the Choctaw Nation to do this for the children. Thanks. And I guess uh, Jennifer Chadwick is going to talk now. My name is Jennifer Chadwick. I'm the Native Americans Programs Coordinator for the OU Children's Diabetes Center, so I work with Dr. Copeland and Dr. Short. Um, I was hired about nine years ago for the Today trial that Dr. Copeland spoke about. I specifically was hired to do the lifestyle component of the Today trial, and I was hired to work in southeastern Oklahoma with Choctaw Nation. At the time, it was a great fit because myself, being a Choctaw tribal member, um, I was able to go to down there and be around my community and my, my tribal people and, and kind of start to experience a little bit of and see some of the things that are happening in, in their community. And by traveling down there quite frequently and, and being exposed to the tribal community, I started to notice quite a few things in their community and their uh, situations that was occurring was that there are a lot of great tribal intervention programs for adults and for employees, uh, specifically trying to incentivize them to exercise. However, working with uh, adolescents who had type 2 diabetes, I noticed that there really wasn't anything there going on to incentivize adolescents to be more active. 
And so in partnering with Dr. Copeland, who goes down to Tallahena quite frequently to treat the children with diabetes and endocrinology uh, conditions, we started visiting and uh, came up with the idea to do this preventative program, this opportunity, and visiting with Tammy and uh, several leaders with Choctaw Nation, we came up with the plan to see, can you actually pay kids to exercise? So that's the, the framework for where this project originally came from. And um, that's why we, we got it up and we got it going. And it's a real simple kind of concept. If I give you a dollar for exercising for 20 minutes, will you do it? That's the, that's the premise behind the, the, the trial. And so that's how we got up and going. It's a great little um, project that we've, we've started. It's been going for about a year and a half. So as Marianne says, we have approximately 30 participants who have uh, participated in the trial. We've no, we also originally started the trial in Hugo um, based off of some suggestions from Choctaw Nation. We felt like that was the uh, location to originally start the trial. And then we have since added an, an additional location with the Tallahena site. Uh, we do have um, a connection with the Durant Wellness Center and we're looking to maybe possibly begin adding uh, participants there in Durant. So this is a project that's expanding. Um, we plan to expand it now for the, about two and a half years. We have on the project to expand, but we are looking to add about 60 participants total. All of the kids that enroll can be involved in the project for up to a year. And we have different incentive structures as they go along. We've divided the year up into three separate sections. The, for the first four months of the study, we're incentivizing the exercise frequency. So the more often they come, the more money they get. And in the second four-month phase, we start to incentivize exercise duration. The recommendation is for children and physical activity is that all kids should be active at least 60 minutes a day. Anybody who's familiar with NFL football promotion, NFL Play 60, that's what that's uh, tied into. They've done a great job of promoting this idea of all kids should be active 60 minutes a day. So during the middle phase of the, of the study involvement, the kids are encouraged to reach that 60 minute target. We only ask them to do three days a week and, and try to achieve uh, activity on the other days on their own. And then in the final phase of the study, we uh, start taking away some of the incentives to see if that uh, exercise behavior is durable, if it'll last after the program begins to go away. And uh, <clears throat> we, uh, in terms of the mechanics, we pay the kids with reloadable debit cards every two weeks. So we give them a, a, a nice sheet, a, a printout of all the sessions that they've uh, performed over the last two weeks. They are very, we give them explicit directions about how much money they've earned based on their uh, either frequency or duration of exercise, and then we give them that money uh, electronically so that they can get fairly frequent feedback. It's not quite as good as, uh, we had one kid who was a little disappointed that the treadmill wasn't like the uh, video game machine that spits out the tickets every minute. <laughs> we don't have that level of technology. That'd be kind of fun, but yeah. No, that's the, one of the things that's very novel about our study is no one has ever tried to incentivize children's exercise behavior like this or using other types of incentives as, so far as we know. There are lots of incentivizing programs across the country using either financial or other types of incentives for either weight loss, um, for older folks to take their heart medication, for people in uh, substance abuse programs to um, follow their, their guidelines. But so far as we know, the pediatric population has not yet been targeted. Here at OU, the, the employee wellness program uses incentives. You know, you can earn um, various kinds of rewards throughout the year if you meet certain target behaviors. So this is an idea that is growing. We're just applying it to the pediatric population for the first time so far as we know. If I could just augment just a little bit of what Dr. Short was saying. The, the concept, though, Teresa, is not terribly new. My grandmother would give me a dime for every A I made. 
And the money is not a lot. It's a small amount, but it's a concept that most households have used over years. Uh, furthermore, the investment, if you think about it, is tiny compared to the potential benefit. The costly effects of obesity and the downstream effects of diabetes, diabetes heart disease, uh, stroke, all of the complications downstream, if we could just put a little bit of financial incentive, incentive into the pot, change behavior, then the downstream benefits are enormous. But it's not a new concept. Well, that certainly is one of the concerns that we will be testing. As Dr. Short said, the third component of this project is to see, our, our hypothesis is that if we can get them moving, get, sort of get the ice broken, that in fact it will have lasting effects even when the incentives go away. Increased self-confidence, pride in how they look, uh, patterns in their behavior, new habits that they're developing, we believe it will be sustained, but we'll find out. That's what research is all about. I'll take that one. Um, partly it has to do with our historic partnership that we have with the Choctaw Nation. As I mentioned, we've been, we've been providing clinical services there in Tallahanna for now nearly 15 years. Uh, and so it was, it was a relationship of convenience. Uh, furthermore, we knew that Native Americans in general were most disproportionately affected by this problem. And, and finally, uh, I think the leadership of the Choctaw Nation approached us and said, let's work harder on prevention. And so it was truly not just a research project coming from the University of Oklahoma, it was a partnership in the development of this research project to try to address, and pardon, address the problem and partner in the fight against diabetes. We've had some self-reports of parents joining their kids. I know um, at our Hugo site, our study coordinator there told us several times that parents were dropping off the kids and either sitting in the car or in the waiting room. And after a while, they said, well, why don't I just jump on the treadmill myself? Um, for a variety of reasons, we, we didn't include parents in our project but we were hoping to document sort of a, a secondary outcome that we would see other family members join or friends. So we have a few anecdotal reports of that. Um, we do have video available via Dropbox, and that information is on the second page of the release for you. So anyone who's watching on streaming, you can access that. There's also a still image um, that we've uploaded for download purposes as well. So you can get all of that information and all the information you need about the video. Although I do have one quick question that I realized when I looked at the video. And Dr. Short, can you explain what is the mask on the young lady's face as she's on the treadmill so they understand what that is? Yeah. So... One of, the, one of the things that we're really interested in is documenting fitness level. and Because I mentioned that having uh, low fitness is a very high risk factor for di future diabetes development. So 
we measure how fit the kids are by putting a mask over their face and we measure how much oxygen their body can use while they're exercising on the bicycle. And the, the, it gives us an integrated measurement of how their heart and their lungs and their muscles all work together to produce power to drive that bicycle as we increase the resistance. So that mask is to, to do that. It, that also tells us how many calories their body is burning and whether they're burning more sugar or fat as the fuel and so forth. We get a lot of neat outcomes from that. So. Yeah, people, people get a little intimidated by that, but actually it's, it's great fun. Right, yeah, we're targeting kids that have diabetes family history and are obese because we know that will uh, put them on the path towards diabetes faster than uh, people that have, that have a lower body weight. But we're not including a weight loss component because the kids are growing. We really are just focusing on exercise behavior. We're hoping that we can show that even if they exercise, or if they exercise, even if they don't lose weight, there's still a lot of things going on beneath the surface that are improving.